And we are live! Okay, let me just check the Twitch, make sure everything's okay. Say hi in the chat if you're already watching. I see the stream has started up on the Twitch page now, so everything's okay. Alright, to those of you who are watching, uh, welcome to the stream. I'm Aaron from Automation Hub, as you may or may not know. Uh, if you're a new viewer, welcome. Feel free to follow us already, because you can tell this stream is amazing right off the bat. But today I'm going to be building a 90s JDM Coupe, because I love 90s JDM Coupes, and I thought, what the hell, why not build one myself? So, I think I'll sit here and talk to you guys for a bit while I wait for the viewer list to pile up. There's Jack Go, hello. Uh, the viewer count actually hasn't updated yet on the Twitch page, but if I look at the viewer list, I can actually uh, greet everyone. So at the moment we have Evardson and Jack Go. Evardson is a bloomin' loyal viewer, wow. I think he's watched every single one of our streams, so uh, welcome, thank you for tuning in every, uh, well, all the time we go live. So yeah, I'm going to be building a 90s JDM Coupe, uh, in the style of maybe Nissan Silvia type contester. And let me just change the music a little bit. There we go. Okay, so I think we should get started. And the request would be Lexus SC430. Alright, I'll do that after this one. So, we're going to start off now. A uh, ladder chassis made of corrosion resistant steel. Again, I'm not the most knowledgeable person as you may know, so if I do anything wrong, feel free to shout at me and I'll learn my lesson at some point. Uh, okay, longitudinal. Wait, ladder chassis? Monocoque. Why, why did I pick ladder chassis? I don't know. Hmm. Double wishbone for both, I think. And we will drive, obviously. You don't, you don't, you don't want an all-wheel drive Japanese coupe. Why? And they're made out of corrosion resistant steel again. And then we pick. Where's the short wheelbase version of this thing? Did I go past it? I did go past it, there it is. Alright. Now we have to morph this lip out. I like, like it like that. And hmm. Make it a little bit higher, lower. There we go. As usual I'm gonna spend forever designing this car because, well, I just love the looks of the coupes of the 90s Japanese car scene, so I'm going to undoubtedly spend a great deal of time working on it. I think that looks too much like a Porsche. Hmm. Alright. Slightly flared wheel arches. Give it... Give the public a subtle hint that you've got something crazy under the hood. Because no doubt this will be a modified beast with a massive turbo when it comes out the factory in 1997. And we're going to... Hmm. Keep it red? I think I'm going to keep it red. And, hmm, I think I've set my microphone volume to actually quite loud, so, but I've, I can see in the chat people are um, complaining about a quiet voice, but I've set my microphone to full. It's on the highest it can go, so I think the only cure for that is quieter music. So. Uh, Keep it maybe about there. Right. Again, if the audio's giving me issues, again, let me know because, well, I don't know. You, you, you guys are good at letting me know when the audio isn't very good. Now, now we get to the fixtures, and I have a little something I want to show you guys. This is a little um, thing I've been working on for quite a while now. I've had a few problems with it, but um, if you look in this vents list. Tell me if you see anything that shouldn't be there, or that you haven't seen before. Go on, you, you can see it. That's right, it's here. This is a Nissan S15 grill slash vent. Here we go, I've been working on this for about, I don't know, three or four days because I haven't really been, well, I'm not really a 3D modeler so I didn't really do very well to start with. I had many problems, it was originally going to be a grill, but for some reason it started crashing the game and I had material issues and every kind of problem went wrong. So I decided to 
try doing it as a vent version and here we have it so it's not perfect there's still a couple of white lines there because the uv mesh is maybe a little bit smaller or a little bit big i still need to work that out it's a work in progress but i mean I'm, I'm happy with it considering how long it took for me to at least get it working and to now get it working to a playable state is actually a big accomplishment for me so i'm gonna uh wait for my congratulations in the chat <laughs> Also, Leo's here. Hello. A bit buggy. Is he talking about the grill or the stream? Hey, Simon. Simon's, Simon will be here to keep you company because obviously I can't keep my eyes glued to the chat all the time with my one monitor. So Simon will be there keeping you company and making sure that you're not plotting anything bad in the chat. So anyway, I figured we'd use these um, vents today just to see how I can put this to use. I think I'm actually going to keep them like that, I actually quite like that. And then have, let's see, hmm, there's the grill I was looking for. Ah, you see this grill that's in the middle is a lot less buggy than my two on the side and it also it uses a different this one's using the hex grill material, this one's using the normal grill material. So I think I may actually change this to a hex grill at some point, but because of that I'm just going to scrap that. Maybe, I don't know. Make them a little bit smaller. I don't know. Wow, it's kind of laggy. Anyway, how about if I make them small? Like that. That means it gives me a handy little space to put my badge and then I can also have space to put headlights. Hmm, sorry, I, just, I was just looking in the chat. Um, so I think we're gonna go in straight away and put on a badge. I think we'll just use the normal automation logo. Look at that. Make it a tad smaller because it seems to be bugging out a little. Perfect. Then we shall go for the headlights. Now, again, I am a fan of using this kind of headlight and then making like a custom shape. Oh, that hasn't worked. I was hoping that the grill would go on top of the headlight, but that doesn't seem to be uh, doesn't seem to be working. So I think, hmm, I'm just going to basically fill out the the actual shape that the headlights are kind of cut out to be. So I'll start with a circle here, and then make a thinner, longer one to go up here and then rotate it slightly. The headlights will be the aspect on which I spend most of my time because I really like having great looking headlights. It's just something I do put a lot of effort into. I actually um, like the shape I'm coming out with here. I'm trying to keep it sort of natural. Hmm. Okay, no, that's actually very ugly. I'm just going to scrap that and use one of the default headlights. I can't be bothered spending a enormous amount of time on a laggy game trying to uh, precisely place headlights, so I think we're just going to go, yeah, just just go with the pair that fits, just, I mean, it's only a 90s car, it doesn't have to be, well, I don't know, it doesn't have to be a design great, to be honest. There we go, just have it fitting in with the body line a little bit more. 
Alright, let's quickly check up on the chat. I always like looking at the chat. Yeah, about that multiplayer thing, I think I think the, the mode we have now, I think, is going to stay. Because I guess that's the mode that a lot of people know and love already, so... I think that will stay, but then I think most people will play the new mode that will come along, like the uh, co-op version of the Grand Campaign, Tycoon Challenges, all that kind of thing. Basically what Dubai has been hosting recently is what I imagine what the new multiplayer features will be like. Hmm. Now, let me see. I have finally got round to downloading all of uh, Cubby's and Pelix's custom vents and grills, so I will be using them at some point in these in these streams. Um, but I think since this is a 90s car, we don't really have to go for any of these um, fancy grills or anything. So if we go back, maybe I can incorporate my vent again. Hmm. See if I do this, it's basically going to be a blatant copy of the S15, so I'm kind of reluctant, and also it's a, still a bit buggy, and I don't really enjoy seeing all the white lines everywhere, so, hmm, you know what, standard sort of small grill there. I'm actually not sure if I should have um, extruded the lip out, because it kind of looks a bit silly now that I think about it. Oh, Cubby's here, hello. Oh, we're now at 10 viewers, that's... Yes, I, I congratulate all you viewers for making 10 of you, that's always a good number to have. Anything in double figures is a pretty good achievement. So, back to these vents. Where's... Oh, I hate, it's annoying having their two pages because I keep forgetting where everything is. So I think possibly adding those could... Maybe if I make that a bit longer. Hmm. It looks very happy. Or determined or something. I don't know, I don't want to make it too complicated because I mean it's really only going to be a simplistic sort of design. And I know I put too much effort into things that really should be quite simple. This will work well. <laughs> nope. <laughs> that is very ugly. Okay. I think I'm just going to take the wheels. I don't, I'm not going to try and do any fancy vent work or anything. Oh my god. I don't know. I'm, I'm completely stumped as I normally am. Maybe I should just have two of these, like that, but a little bit smaller. I want to kind of really keep in with the JDM sort of design style, but, hmm, well I guess we'll do that, and then we'll add number plate holder just to break it up a little bit and then we'll go ahead and place some vents on the side hmm I think that works okay although it's a shame that you can still see sort of the vent going through ever so slightly it almost reminds me of um Maybe almost a NASCAR, I don't know why, but I'm just getting that sort of impression from it. Anyway, I think once we add some vents it will look a bit nicer. Hmm. I don't know, what do you guys think? Enlighten me in the chat, let me see. Give me some suggestions on how I can improve this. sit here in the chat for a while until I see people's opinions on this.
Hmm, the stream seems to be working fine for me, Leah. Whoops, I keep knocking my mic. It's quite close to me, and I always keep hitting it with my arm. Anyway, I think I'm just going to move on to the back now until I see some opinions, because I see there's a very, well, there's quite a large delay in the um, stream. So let's move on to the taillights, and this is the first time, I think, that I get to use the new fixtures in um, on a stream. So we have the LED light strips, which we are not going to use because this is the 90s, so they can go away for now. Although I am quite tempted with the uh, Supra taillights, I really, I really do like them. Whoever made these, well done to you, because they are quite brilliant. I mean, I would like to make my own taillights for this game, but considering people have said it's much more complicated than grills, and I can't really get the grills completely right at the moment, I think I'm just going to stick with grills until I improve my skills, and then maybe try and do some taillights. Hmm. But I do like those taillights, I don't know if they fit with this car though. I don't know. Hopefully when people start making some more taillights we can really get some interesting designs. Hmm. I don't know whether to just go for something simple and square. No. Definitely not. It doesn't fit with the shape of the body, really. Maybe that, though. If I just make it kind of... In fact, that reminds me of an S13 now. I don't know. Make them a little bit thinner. Then possibly try and do an extended tail light right across the middle. I doubt it will work well, but we can try it anyway. If it would stop freezing. Come on. The annoying thing is the really large sort of boundary around there. It becomes really noticeable when it's when you make the taillights quite quite large. Let's see if this works okay. Nah. I don't think it does. I'm just gonna go simple on that part and then maybe... Hmm, maybe add this grill. I think this was uh, one of Pelix's grills. Maybe just add that sort of extending across the middle. Oh. There we go. And then I can plop the badge on. Perfect. Now we're getting somewhere. Now I'm going to have a quick look back at the chat to see people's opinions now. Oh, also Cheese Man. Hmm. Let's see. Not not Leo's cup of tea, but he's very picky. I agree, I'm also very picky. Um. Hmm. Put your lights close to the edges, the car doesn't look right. Okay. There we go. Okay, so Kobe said the space between the headlights and the grills feels empty. Yeah, I, th I think that was one of the problems I had with this body, is it's, there seems to be quite a large space in the middle here. And to try and fill it with things that look pleasing is quite difficult for me. Maybe if I... If I flip that, I wonder... I don't know if this will be too much, possibly. Nah, I don't like it. No, nah. It would be quite—it would be quite cool if we could somehow incorporate this uh, <laughs> Kuntash scoop somewhere, but it wouldn't really work for this design. Maybe, maybe another time. I mean, this is a damn good vent, though. I do like it. I mean, that just looks. <laughs> it can be badass when it's used on the right body. Just having some mad scoops coming out. But anyway. So how how do you think I should fill this sort of gap? I think maybe if I copy this vent... Wow, I really need to scale this to be smaller. Right, so if I make this... 
a lot thinner to about the same size. That's still too big. Wow, the lag. I really don't like playing this game on there. Uh, well, I don't like playing this game while it's being laggy. <laughs> that is downright ugly. Oh my gosh. Oh, I, I keep... I underestimate how large these are when I select them. I wonder if I did that. And then possibly... Put them on there. Maybe make them a bit thinner. I really don't know. Don't know whether that whether that's just ugly or whether it's worked well. Time to consult the chat. between the vents and the grill. So I've been actually making the complete wrong effort. The vents and the grill. What if I just tip that? Could that work? No, it won't. Maybe I can put uh, fog lights. There's the simple decision. Just plop on a couple of fog lights there. How does that look? Not too bad. Maybe I can actually just extend this vent and then put that sort of in there. What do you think, Cubby? Ah, <laughs> yeah, I just saw it in the chat now. Try adding some fog lights. Ah, uh, this um, stream, this stream delay can be quite confusing sometimes. I'm now just re-watching myself place these uh, fog lights on the stream now. Duke Accent is here, hello! Welcome to the stream. I'm building a 90s JDM Coupe for those of you who've just tuned in. And also I think I'm actually quite happy with this design. I think it looks quite decent now. One thing I forgot though is um, door handles. But the side is just, just going to be quite simple. I don't think I'm going to put any vents or anything fancy, so just settle for some generic door handles. Hmm. There we go. All right, and then just have an indicator, maybe a square one actually. There we are. Now let's move back onto the back because I haven't quite finished here. Hmm, let's try. I don't know why, but I'm still really tempted to use my own vent. I know it's kind of like, I don't know, not very good of me. But I do think they could work here. Yeah, I think that works. Although I don't know whether the back looks a bit too old for the front. I mean, with the square tail lights and all. I mean, if you go back here, it almost looks 80s. And then you go around there and you see a nice curvy body shell. And then you go to the front and see it's actually quite modern. Can't really get it much lower. Can't get what much lower, cheese man. The vent, the uh, I don't know. Anyway, some exhausts. Hmm, I think maybe that would that would do it. I don't know whether that that's too much to the side or not. I don't know, am I just being picky? 
Let me see what you guys think of the side first. I, th I think I'm actually going to, um... Oh, what? I wasn't supposed to put it there. I just add something there just to break up the emptiness. Double exhausts, please. Hmm. Alright then. Single... Like, a single muffler on both sides, or double on both sides? Catering to Cheeseman's needs. Oh, we're up to 11 viewers, that's a pretty good figure. Let's see who's watching now. Anyone else I can welcome. D. Jerry! You're new, welcome to the stream, welcome to Automation Hub. Uh, feel free to follow us if you're enjoying yourself here. And make yourself known in the chat as well, there's plenty of people there who'll have a nice conversation with you. Keep your company. While I wait for Cheeseman's reply to whether he wants two on both sides or one on both sides. All right, no, I'm, I'm spending too I'm spending too long waiting on people in the chat, so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do that possibly. Either single single or double double. Hmm, I think single single works better with a car like this. So, although I think we're gonna use that tip, looks a bit nicer. And it also looks quite large. Make it a little bit smaller. In fact, I'm also going to have a small wing on the back just to give it a bit more, a bit more edge. Hmm. Do you think that looks okay? Looks a bit thin from where from where I'm looking. I've also noticed that the colour on my screen is a lot more... I don't know, my car is red in the game and then on the stream it almost looks orange. I'm not sure why that is, but I guess we'll stick with it. Also on my X-Split um, preview of what I'm recording, it also is the exact same colour as it is in game, but on the stream it appears to be a bit orange. Also, if you guys have any requests of cars you want me to build after this, because I've only planned to build this car and then you guys on what you want me to do. So, if you want me to continue building cars, let me know what car you want me to build. And then, also, if you want me to do something else to do with automation, just let me know and I'll see what I can do. But I'm probably going to stream for about another hour, and then, then we'll call it a day. I agree, cheese man, we need new wings. I'm actually thinking of trying to model wings, but I'm again I'm not too sure how. I don't know whether you make half and then it mirrors or if you make the whole thing and you know, all the factors that there are with making a grill, you know, how, how you have to make the UV mesh and everything. I'm not sure what goes into making a wing. So once I know that I might try and uh, do one myself. I'm thinking of doing the RX7 wing if I was able to make one. Anyway, I think we have the design finally finished after about 20 minutes of fiddling around. And yeah, I'm relatively pleased with it. I agree the back could be a bit better. I mean, the taillights are obviously a big issue, as it's known with everyone who plays this game, basically. But hey, we can't really do much for now. So I think we're going to stick with this and move right on to an engine. So I've already decided I want inline six turbo because that's true, true JDM fashion. So, cast iron, let me just center this uh, camera. Cast iron, keep it sort of, hmm, that's too small.
I don't know why, but I always try to have the same stroke as I do bore. So I'm going to do a lot of button clicking here. Okay, good enough. 1999, my year of birth. Let's keep it like that. Okay. Do we need forged internals or anything? I don't think that came on uh, normal production coupes of the time, so... Again, do let me know if I'm wrong, because I don't really have in-depth knowledge or anything. I just know that 90s JDM cars is a thing I love, so... I don't necessarily know all the ins and outs of what different components we use and everything, so... This is just based off predictions. Pelix, hello. You missed my uh, my first attempt at a grill, which isn't really amazing yet. But anyway, now we're on to building this engine, so have a good time. Uh, okay, single. Hmm. Do you want single overhead cam or dual overhead cam? Ah. Uh, I think dual overhead cam, just to be a bit fancy. Four, do, we, do we need four valves per cylinder? I think we could get away with two. Hmm. I don't know, should I go dual overhead cam or single overhead cam? Let me know in the chat while I continue making the rest of this engine. So compression I think is going to be about... 8.5 possibly and then quite a sporty cam profile hmm <laughs> we could try VTEC <laughs> VVT and VVL nah just VVT on the intake I think will do ah colour we need to pick a colour obviously we're going to pick orange because I picked that for everything there we go and if it would let me click the arrow that would be lovely okay turbocharger now to the good bits. So we're going to go ball bearing turbo just to get a bit of a wider um, spool area I guess. Air to air medium. I don't think we need any water cooling or anything yet because this thing isn't going to be too crazy. We're just going to go performance and then reduce the size a little bit. Want to get the widest possible um, spooling time. I don't know if I'm using the right terminology there, but I'm just going to use the word spooling time. Regardless of whether it's right or wrong. Let's see, AR ratio. Hmm. About there. <laughs> and then I think it should run about one bar of boost. There we go. That should be decent enough. It runs for a good couple of thousand RPM. And then we're going to have it multi point injected with standard intake and premium unleaded. Now let's go back into the chat to see what you guys are saying. People are telling me not to do turbo. I want to try turbo. I barely ever use turbo, so I think I'm actually... Yeah, I'm going to go... Maybe I'll make a turbo version and then a naturally aspirated version. So, kind of like the SR20, I guess. And dual overhead cam 4. VVT and VVL is being suggested. So, ah, yes, okay. Yeah. Right up to 80. There we go, bit of, bit of VTEC action. Gotta love a bit of VTEC, don't you? Fuel mixture. 14, I guess. Slap on a bit of fuel system quality, that always helps. go. Now let's see if there's any more objections to me using turbo. 
Well, the year I'm using is 1997, so that's fairly forward, kind of. Yeah, I think VVL, I think VVT and VVL seems a good choice for this year, 1997. So, early, I'm um, sorry, where is it? Turbo is modded JDM. I agree, but there was also SR20 DET engines and stuff like that. I don't know. I just wanted to use a turbo. It's, I just I just like turbo. Please let me use my turbo. And let me click that arrow so I can test it. Here we go. I'm sorry if the sound will be a bit laggy because the game doesn't run very well while I'm streaming. But here we go. Oh, it seems like it's going to fail due to knock. <laughs> That is disgraceful. Yeah, it's failed. By a mile. That's failed that's failed miserably. <sighs> Compression down by a lot. Here we go, this is better. Wow, that's a that's a peak. Hmm. For once I think I've made a bit too much power. That never that never normally happens with me. If I expect to get like 180 horsepower, I would get about a hundred. But hey, there's the first test. Starting to reach its RPM limit, but we still have good reliability. Very high torque and pretty high power. Especially for a JDM sort of 90s engine. Uh, emissions is low. Economy is surprisingly good. I don't know, let me see what you guys think. I'm not really too good at stat crunching. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's too much by a lot, but I don't think a stock engine for a JDM Coupe would be 300 horsepower. Hmm. I don't know. Well, l looking in the chat, I think possibly 214 would be a good kind of power. I don't know. Someone out there maybe can search for how much power an SR20 DET makes, and someone could be helpful and search that up. I thought 276 was it, yeah, because I remember playing games like Gran Turismo and always picking Japanese cars, and they all had 276 horsepower. But yeah, I just saw it there in the chat, 276. <laughs> Anyway, I think from looking at the chat, I guess this engine is pretty viable. And also, I'm actually surprisingly happy about the economy. I never normally get good economy scores. So, now we get onto the tedious process of naming the engine. Or at least it's notoriously tedious with these streams because I like to let the viewers input and then it turns into a battle of who has the best idea and what, what we should add to the name and it ends up being an unbearably long name. I remember for our Garneau company we actually named the engine after a French cheese, which is something that I guess hasn't really been done before. <laughs> Alright, now I'm receiving challenges for this turbo. Okay, how early I can get it spooling. Hmm. See I don't want I don't want this uh full boost part to be too short, so... So at the moment it's at 2,500. I want it to spool maybe... I don't know, I can't... I can't get it to spool earlier unless I make the turbo really small. Unless I make it run less boost, but I don't think that would be very good. And the intercooler doesn't really affect where it first spools. Medium and large intercoolers make zero difference. Maybe add a little bit of quality that doesn't actually do anything to the graph. Wow, that's <laughs> that's gone worse. We're now at 176. <sighs> okay, 
this is going to probably turn into a turbo challenge stream, I guess. Hmm. Maybe... Oh, turn up the max boost slightly so that I get it spooling about 2,500. Ah. Basically, I've just reduced the point of peak power and improved economy by actually nothing. So that didn't really work. Hmm. Bigger. I'm going to make a bigger turbo, I think. And then... Oh, see, stupid AR ratio. If I make it spool... Okay, now it's spooling way too late. Hmm. Oh my gosh, I don't know. I could try that, but then it's not really spooling for very long. Hundred and eighty six. Ah, oh, we've got Weasel. He's another new person. Welcome. Feel free to follow us if you're enjoying this stream as well. I say that to every new viewer that comes on now, <laughs> as if I'm desperate, as if we're desperate for followers. Um. Anyway, I think I'm gonna ditch the um, how early can I make it spool, and I'm just gonna go for making this uh, 276 horsepower. Hmm, let's see if that helps. Oh, it's knocking slightly. Alright, so we're at 211, which is three less than we actually started with. So we're aiming for about 260 plus, I reckon. Hmm, make the fuel a little bit richer. I guess we're gonna. I guess economy is gonna end up being thrown out the window if we're doing uh, turbo challenges. <laughs> so, what else can I do? Make everything the biggest possible, and that makes it terrible. Oh my god! I really don't know. Make it run a really high maximum boost. Well, 1.2. So I've gained one horsepower from that. Wow. I'm really not too good with turbos. I thought I was good at tuning turbos. Get it to spool around 3,000. Ah, oh, I've just realized that's not 2,500, that line. That line's actually 3,000. I read it wrong. Wow, the amount of time it spools for, if it does that, is not very good. Ah, oh wait, that... Get the sweet spot. There we go. And then AR ratio. Hmm. Gosh, let's try that, but again, it's barely even spooling. Down to 183. Any tips? Oh, that's helped. That's helped a great deal. Okay. Alright, that should be better. Let's try now. Okay, 216. Let's try little tiny adjustments of the AR ratio. How's that, how's that gone down? The boost graph didn't really change at all.
Right, I'm going to stick with this turbo and then I'm going to sit here in the chat until I see more of Cheeseman's tips. I don't know why I'm only making 204 horsepower. Well, I guess I could up the compression. To about 8. And it's knocking. I was wondering why it went down. 207. Wow. Ah, maybe it's the exhaust. Ah. Wow, I'm stupid. I was li I was limiting it by the exhaust. Ah, that's better. So we're on 222 horsepower. What if we just slightly turn up the VVL profile? Ah, that's made it worse. Okay. Maybe down to 75? Okay, 224. And we're almost at 300 newton meters of torque, which is pretty decent. I know the turbo graph shows spool time, but I mean, even then, the spool time barely changed when I went down in power. So I was just confused as to why that was. I think I might slightly. I don't, I don't know whether this will help, I don't think it will, turning up this boost, I think it'll make it much worse. Yeah, it's definitely going to make it much worse. The economy has still stayed relatively okay. So 225, that's a new maximum. Right, manual test mode. I'm warning you now, the sound will be incredibly laggy and incredibly terrible. Bottom end parts seem to be going yellow slightly. And this turbo, ah. Wow, this. The, um. <laughs> the gauges are going a bit crazy having a little dance party. It, why won't it stop? There we go. <laughs> what the hell are they doing? Can you stop now? There you go. You're back at zero. So seems to be intercooler those two and then hmm hmm so turbine apparently limits airflow is it too small can I make it a bit bigger what happens Whoops, that was not very good, I didn't need to do that. Ah, oh, that's... we're now making 234 horsepower, with slightly making the turbine a bit better. Yeah, my FPS is very low, but that's just a, comp a consequence of having a crappy laptop. I mean, I could play on low settings, but that would probably be worse for your eyes than looking at low frame rate. I did kind of want the, sp the spur time, spool time to be about three, uh, 3,000, as was said by Cheeseman, but I guess, I guess this will be okay. There we go! Brilliant! 265 horsepower. And I think with that, that will be quite enough uh, turbo tuning. <laughs> so, 
I'm gonna up the compression until I get to the limit of my full octane. I think that might be a little bit too much, let me see. Yeah, definitely. Hmm. I thought ignition timing increased it by, like, virtually nothing. Hmm. Okay, I think I'm going to go a touch down on compression. And then spend the rest of it on ignition timing. Hmm, nope, that hasn't worked. Oh wow, this frame rate is, a, is a rather annoying. Okay, so I think 269 will probably be the best we can go. My, uh, my AMD APU is A4. Yeah, my... <laughs> I think my APU is one of the lower ones. I think the graphics chip it uses is H, um, sorry, Radeon HD 8330. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's what it is. And whatever it is, it is awful, to put it in one word, awful. But I am looking forward to the Unity switch, which should hopefully give me much better frame rates, and I might even be able to bump up the settings to high at some point, hopefully. But the frame rate has actually been quite decent lately, like while I'm not recording the frame rate has been somewhat bearable, I mean usually it runs at around 25 but I've been seeing at least 30 recently I think. And the thing is, when I went out to buy this laptop, I, wanted, I set out to buy a laptop for gaming, but because I didn't know much about computers, I went to one of the assistants in PC World and then he directed me to a laptop and I assume he directed me to one that would be the least value for money and that would earn them the most profit. So, for that, I will say, Ryan, that's the name of the PC World Assistant, fuck you. <laughs> but I doubt he'll ever hear that. Anyway, let's name the engine because I, I don't want to tune it anymore. It will make my head hurt. My laptop model, that is HP Pavilion G6. E something something. I'm not quite sure. I actually looked for it on PC World not too long ago and I don't think it's actually on the website. <sighs> I didn't even know the difference between discrete graphics and integrated graphics when I went out to buy this laptop so I actually got them mixed up the wrong way around and I thought that integrated graphics was better so I guess this laptop is partly down to my own stupidity. But, come Christmas, I'll be getting some money and building my own PC, and that will hopefully, well, not hopefully, it definitely will be a crap ton of times better than this laptop. So I'm going to build myself a computer, and then I'm going to save my laptop for school things and maybe some editing here and there. So, as for my PC that I'm building, I'm hoping to maybe put about around 500 to 600 pounds into it, so it'll have probably GTX 760 or maybe an R9 260 and I'm not too sure about the specifics but I know that it's either going to be GTX 760 or R9 260 maybe 270 if I stretch my budget a little bit so be excited for that because then you'll hopefully see much more higher quality streams but anyway any suggestions for a name for this engine? some sort of engine code because I don't have one. Someone else can invent an engine code for me. Hmm. 
Well, I think we could say 20 for 2 litres, 2.0. Um, we have to have a T in there for turbo. So it must have 20 and T. But I'm not sure um, what other letters to put in. Whoops, I clicked on the wrong thing. Leo is back. Welcome. You just missed a very brain numbing PC talk, and you also missed a very brain numbing turbo tuning session. TMP20T, that is pretty good. Where does the <clears throat> MXPB... MX... Where would that come from? M MX5? <laughs> uh, I don't know. MXPBT. I guess P could be pleb, or PB could be pleb. I know TMP is the Manx pleb. And then 20T6. No, cheese man, it's um, HP Pavilion G6 and then something else. It's not a 15. I think every other HP Pavilion is a HP Pavilion 15 and then mine is just different. Okay, so I've got lots of suggestions for engine names. Um, Hmm. I don't know. I I don't know why I'm so I'm making it so important to give the engine a good name. Just call it Sparrow. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I know, actually. AH for automation hub. AH six twenty. T. 6 means inline 6, 20 means 2.0, and then T for turbo. I don't care what anyone else says anymore, I'm sticking with that because I'm not even looking at the chat right now. And now finally, onto the trim. We must have spent about half an hour on this engine. A lot longer than I expected to. Manual box, obviously. Um, 6 speed, I think. Or should we? Hmm. Yeah, 6 speed. Wow, 169 miles an hour. Right, spacing can be around about 30. And then top speed up. But I wonder if it can reach, maybe make it a tiny bit higher because peak power is just, pardon me, <laughs> peak power is just there, so. Ah, I realize we don't have the, um, new, the different diff types yet. Again, playing playing partly on the beta and partly on the public build does mess with your head a little bit. Medium compound road tyres. I'm not going to go sports compound. Right, let's see. I think maybe 195s. Or should we go 205s? I don't want them too wide because, well, I know that most type most tires around at that time were sort of no wider than maybe 225s. I think. Again, someone could correct me if I'm wrong, as I assume I am. Oh, by the way, Pelix, you didn't see my grill yet, so. I, at this point I used it to go between the headlights, but there's still these white lines here, so I'm, I'm assuming I didn't do the UV mesh quite right, I think I've done it a bit too big. But other than that, it works decently. It was originally supposed to be a grill, but that ended up crashing the game, and I think, now that I think about it, it was something to do with the lure file. So I'll go back and see what happened there, but I changed it to a vent, and then I copied one of the vent's lure files instead, and everything seemed to work perfectly, so... 
I'm going to stick with this for now and call that my first grill, which, shall I, which I shall be putting up for download soon, maybe even tonight as a work in progress type thing. So look forward to that. You can you can make your own S15 if you wanted. I'm talking to you, the Tom, even though you're not here. Even though he's already done a, um, a S15. Sorry, my mind went blank then. Okay, something's... Leo says something is a cliché. Wow. Millicent... Uh, what? <laughs> yeah, my UV map is buggy for that grill. I, I changed it about three times because it was quite a lot worse and you could see right into the car, but the thing is, it's kind of like a fine line on how big I can make this UV mesh because it kind of goes straight from grill to paint almost there's not really a very large um, gap separating it so I kinda have to get it spot on for it to work very well anyway back to this I'm gonna have 16 inch not 15, 15 seems a bit too small it was a little bit bigger and move swiftly on to the brakes I always have a habit of doing rather big brakes, so I don't know if uh, I don't know if 250 is too big or it might be just the right size. I don't know. And then same on the other side or on the back, sorry. But I guess I'll make them 260. I don't know. And under tray I guess can be semi-clad, I mean the top speed is actually higher than I expected so I guess it would need some sort of downforce. Hmm, full brake airflow I guess, I'm not sure how that affects it, I don't know whether it affects drag or downforce or something like that, but I don't know, have a little bit of downforce. We actually have this wing so, I'm, I'm, again I'm not really too clued up about these um, aerodynamics calculations so I don't know how to tune it right. I normally just maybe have about 20 downforce and then I don't even bother messing with the aero inclination. And seats, we're gonna have five seats. I realized I've made the back maybe a little bit too small, I maybe could have moved this pillar forward if it's possible on this body, I'm not actually quite sure and premium interior, insulation a little bit down. Entertainment I'm going to keep as standard because I don't think maybe your bog standard Sylvia's and stuff of the time didn't really have very much in the way of entertainment. Hmm, traction control? I guess? I don't really remember um, 90s JDM cars having traction control but I guess we'll just have it. And then sporty-ish suspension. Maybe increase the ride height just a little. I wonder will they ever make the ride height actually... Um, well, you can actually see the ride height on the car. That would be nice. Anyway, let's test this and see what kind of stats we get. I hope it ends up to be a fairly decent car. <laughs> wow, we've somehow started the cheese talk again. Well, I guess it's because Cheese Man's here. Maybe that just kind of sparks the urge to talk about cheese. Turbo Benzina in Iniezione Daletta. That sounds rad. Cheese is one of the great foods of mankind, I agree. Especially Borsa. That is the world's greatest cheese in my opinion. I love it. Anyway, I didn't actually look at these stats, so tameness is... Ooh, it's a bit low, in my opinion. Uh, sportiness is decent enough, comfort is good, prestige is good, and safety is good. I'm actually surprisingly... Well, I'm impressed by the amount of prestige, actually. And it costs just $9,705 to produce and that's at today's prices 
and utility is good enough, reliability is quite good, and economy is good enough, I guess. Ah, see you Roland, I hope you enjoyed this stream. I'm not even going to ask you to follow us because I know you already do. But yeah, have a good night, see you later. Hopefully you'll be here for the next stream, which will be on Saturday. The RX Baby Bell. <laughs> Seriously. God, the cheese. Cheese is everywhere. Anyway, let's head into detail stats. So, let's see what's making all the nice prestige. Hmm, the cylinders seem to have contributed a lot, and the footprint. Let's see, engine. So I guess I made a damn good engine, if it's giving us plus 10%. Also maybe because it's uh, turbocharged, and then also top speed is quite good. Other than that, nothing really, so I guess, I guess it's just our engine that contributes quite a lot to it. And safety. Hmm. I guess it's because, yeah, safety options, engine placement. Yeah. Anyway, let's head to the test track. Head to the Top Gear track, because I can never really base my times off anything else on this automation test track, so that's why I never ever actually use it. But on this, you can relate this track to real cars in real life, so we can compare it to things. Anyway, let's get started. Again, I warn you of the very laggy sound that will that will penetrate your ears now. Did I press the wrong button? Did that start? Ah, there we go. Okay, let's check the track stats. It did a 133.7 or 0.8 if you round it up actually. Uh, I don't know, is that a good time? I'm I don't know I don't know many cars times off the top of my head, so I can't really relate this to anything. I know my very first BRC entry did a 127, and that BRC entry was actually disqualified for being too light, so I guess that's not really a valid relation to be honest. Yeah, I'll sit, I'll sit here and look at the chat for a bit and let you take in the amazingness of those stats. Let me also give, have a quick check up on the viewer list. We're now at 12 viewers, which is a, a good number in relation to my other streams. So, everyone who was here at the start is actually still here, except for Pelix. We also have Dr. Weasel Gaming still watching, I hope you're enjoying yourself. I like having new viewers, it makes me happy. Right. Hmm. Anything else I wonder if we can improve? Maybe make the tyres a touch wider. Maybe we can try and improve on that time. I know that doing some uh, tyres and suspension quality can help quite a bit. stats. Huh, not much improvement, but an improvement nonetheless, 133.2. Uh, and I think we'll leave it at that. I've spent way too long on this car, I think. But all in all, I am quite happy with it. I won't, let me hear what you guys think. Was this 90s JDM Coupe a success? Or was it a pile of crap? Which I guess wouldn't really be too surprising if it was. In my opinion, I actually think the design for the front may be a little bit too modern, but that's just me. Oh, apparently the uh, 
test track around three to four seconds slower, so 137, I guess. <laughs> Much less uh, appealing. Anyway, let's let me see the time. Oh, look at that. In fact, I've just realized my laptop is dying and I made a rookie mistake and forgot to plug my charger in. So I'll be back with you shortly while I go and grab my charger and plug it in. There we go, I hit two birds with one stone there, I grabbed my charger and I also got my cat out the way <laughs> because she was being quite needy and annoying, so anyway, let me quickly check the chat, see what's going on. Nothing. <laughs> right. Yeah, so we're having a discussion about the test track then. Yeah, the game, it's annoying how the, um, the car doesn't change speed while it's going around corners. That's, well, I don't know, that's just not a really very good simulation, but I don't know, it's good enough, the simulation, I mean, at least, at least it's there. Anyway, Jacko is still here, is he? I don't know, let me check, because he wanted me to build a Lexus SC430, so I think we are going to do that now. Let me actually get a picture of the car so that I can actually remember exactly what it looks like. Because I do know that it is a pretty diabolical car if you ask me. But he wanted he wanted it so I guess we'll build it. Anyway, oh, we haven't even named the car yet. That's going to be another tedious process. Unless I just name it. I don't know. The Cotton Something. I don't know. Uh, I really don't know. Since I just let my cat outside, I'll name it after a big cat. Maybe Puma. Or is that too... I don't know, is that too cliche? Too stereotypical? I don't know. I'll let you, I'll let you see what to name it in the chat. Wow, just opening my Google Chrome window then and seeing the big picture of the Lexus C430. Not a good sight. <laughs> Sorry about that, I clicked the wrong, uh, the wrong thing. Hmm. The Cotton Ocelot. Hmm. Possibly. <laughs> the Cotton Kitten. <laughs> 
Oh wow. Hmm. Yep, I'm calling it the Cotton Kitten. It's it's catchy as hell. Here we are, Cotton Kitten. Contrary to its nature. Now we exit out of this. I said now we exit out of this, thank you. Head and head back into sandbox. Hmm. There we go, Cotton Kitten, in all its glory. Car. I don't think I'm going to make an exact replica of this car because I don't want to have to end up researching all its parts and stuff, so I'm just going to assume some things. I hope it has double wishbone, front and rear. I'll let Jack go explain. <laughs> Cotton Kimosabe. Panzer Kampfwagen Den. Oh, that's a that's a new viewer actually. Welcome. <laughs> and that's actually a very funny name. <laughs> Panzer Kampfwagen Den. Well, I don't know what ten is in German, but welcome nonetheless. Pyrophosphate. A good chemistry-based name. Is it rear wheel drive? I think it is. Again, I'm not sure. And then we'll make it out of aluminium. <laughs> right, let's see where's that body gone. Ah, not 2014, it's 2010 I think it is. No, not 2002. There we go, 2010. <laughs> so, I think while I'm designing this car, if someone could be nice and helpful and look up this car's engine specs so that I can at least make it kind of similar. To the real car. Uh, that would be great. Uh, let me see the body shape of this thing. Hmm. Well, it's got a very small, very kind of, yeah, a short um, back window. And then it's quite, got quite a short stubby tail. We're not going to flare out the wheel arches because well, we're just not. I think that needs to go out. This needs to go in. Is it that bulgy? No, it's not that bulgy. I think that's about right. And then we're going to paint it silver, because that's the car that I'm looking at. That's not silver. That's not silver. There we go. There's, there's no sort of nice, shiny silver except for that, which is quite garish. So I guess we're going to stick with this silver. I mean, it's an, it's an ugly silver, which I guess matches the ugly nature of the car. Right, let's see. Um, oh, that's going to be quite difficult to get those, the shape of those headlights, right? Four point three liter V eight. I didn't think it had such a big engine. All right, I need to keep switching between tabs to look at this car now. So it's kind of hmm, that's a good start. and then make it sort of a little bit thicker at the sides, oh not like that. I can hear my cat clawing at the door. Oh 
Ah, oh, this isn't looking too, too amazing. Hmm. That looks up. That looks more like Aston Martin headlights. I'm gonna let my cat in. I feel sorry for her. <laughs> she just ran around the door like meow. Anyway, yeah, they look like Aston Martin headlights. Let me see in the chat. I think maybe I'll rotate this first headlight a little bit more, make it a bit thinner maybe, make it a bit pointy. Oh, that's the wrong, wrong way. Very precise movements. There we go, and then I think I'll just need one more to go there. Let me make it thinner. Hmm. Make it even thinner because that's actually quite big. No, I moved the wrong headlight. That's not good. Hmm. That looks too angry. I don't know. Let me quickly check back at the image. Hmm, good enough I guess. I'm, again, I'm not going to spend amazingly long. Hmm. Right, let's go onto the grill. Wow, how am I going to do that? I guess I'll start with the middle. Hmm. I'm guessing the Rolls Royce grill would be an insult to Rolls Royce to put it on there. See, it's a shame that we can't have this, but kind of like a slightly different shape. I mean, that would be a, almost a good enough shape, but there's no chrome version. Same with that. My cat is meowing like hell. Oh, okay, this might... In fact... Ah, oh, there's no there's no one with the with any chrome bars in the middle. By the way, that's a darn good grill. Well done, Air PLX, for making that. I guess this would be the best to use. But it would have to be flipped around. <laughs> wow, this is really not not a lot like the M <laughs> SC430, but I guess it's good enough. And then we have the badge. And then we just add a little indicator there to act as the strip of chrome. In fact, it's not even a strip of chrome, I don't think. But I'll make one.
Oh, well, I'm going to keep it as chrome anyway just because there's nothing else I can use to separate. Where is it? Here we go. Make it really thin. And then we have small square little fog light. What a diabolical thing this is. There. Yeah. Somewhat rushed, but I'd say that's good enough. I don't really want to do the SC430 any justice. It doesn't deserve any. In fact, I missed out on the indicator. Where is it? I've gone blind. Right, whereabouts exactly is that? Just above there. In fact, that's a bit too low. There we go, a bit smaller. If it would let me click the arrow. Alright, the front is done. On to the door handles. Is there anything else on the side? One indicator and then a door handle. So we will do the indicator first. In fact it's it's one of these coloured indicators. I hope, I'm, I hope this replica is actually up to scratch. Let me check on the chat, I haven't looked in a while. <laughs> it is a sad looking car. Ah, so it's a bit of engine discussion going on. What affects uh, responsiveness? Fuel system, to put it in a nutshell. Uh, where is it? Handles. So it was pretty much that handle, but no chrome because it doesn't deserve any chrome. I almost put it in the wrong place there. Right. So, if you guys are enjoying this stream, make sure you follow us on this Twitch channel to be notified every time we go live. And also head over to facebook.com slash automationhub and like our page there for any other generic updates and some random awesomeness that we may post up there. And other than that, stay tuned to our streams. We will be doing a giveaway at 50 followers, so follow us and you may win something sweet and also go and check out the automationhub.net website when it's finished because I'm sure that that will be a great place to go now let me take let me find a picture of the back of this diabolical machine not 432 430 I don't remember the back of it looking like that. The back of it's actually quite nice. I actually said something nice about such a terrible thing. Hmm. All right. Oh, it's going to be quite difficult to do those uh, tail lights. Hmm. I'm just trying to think which set of tail lights would work. Mm. I'm thinking those are kind of the right shape. But then they're not really the right colour. Oh, it won't let me place them kind of like just kissing the top. Let me see. So they go. Hmm. So I'll need to basically rotate them like so. Oh, it just won't let me overlap the trunk or boot. So I guess I'm going to have to keep it like that and then give them a good old flip. That did nothing. 
I guess because it would obstruct or it would put it into a wrong position again. That's the wrong way. Oh, come on, right. There we go. Oh, the, it looks it looks awful. I can't even have it like at the corner. I'm literally on the on the limit of where I can place it. <laughs> well, that's not very good, is it? Anyway, I guess we'll just leave leave it like that. On to Oh, it has a little lip spoiler, but I'm afraid you probably can't put that on. So we're going to go straight to the number plate holder. Hmm. I guess we'll just use this. And then hmm, there's two little like reflectors at the bottom, so I guess we can add those. Or can we? Can you have square indicators? I guess we'll have to use these. Nah, because they're not that, they're white. I guess these will have to do. And then we have the exhaust, so it's quite a simple back. Oh, my cat's there again. Can't decide where to go. Alright, back to these exhausts. There we go, and now I just need the badge. And again, it wouldn't let me bloody click on it. Hmm. <laughs> it looks nothing like it. But hey, I guess it's the best I can do. For a Lexus SC SC430 anyway. I think the front is is not really that bad. I mean, this grill isn't really very fitting, but hey, it's good enough in my opinion, the front at least. Third tail light from left on the bottom. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I am quite blind if I'm looking for something obvious. <sighs> Let me rotate the car. Tail light, third tail light from bottom on the right. Ah! Hmm. This one, I assume, is what you mean? Let me see if that looks more like it. Okay, no, I need to maybe flip it. Nah, it looked better before I flipped it. Oh, I flipped it the wrong way. Wow. Okay. Okay, good enough. Let me see if Jack goes happy. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay. They're wrong then. Wow, I am totally blind. Okay. Is 
that better? <laughs> I admire your courage, Leo. <laughs> right, I hope I've satisfied Jacko there with these uh with these tail lights. designing this piece of poop. Alright, so V8, and it's quite a big V8. Let me go back to see Jacko's info. Uh, where is it? Hmm, so it's 4.3 litre V8 with VVT, so cast iron I guess. So that's about, so it's over square. I'm not sure whether that's more bore or more stroke. Take a look in the chat, or I'll wait in the chat. Okay, more bore. That's too much bore. bottom end parts, material, info? No, it doesn't say. I guess I'll go cast everything. <laughs> it's probably all it deserves. Dual head cam, I think it was four valves per cylinder, was it? Yep. Ah, oh, stop responding, hooray. There we go. aspirated. Wow, the, the amount of time I have to click for it to register. So, two live head cam, four valves per cylinder, multi-point fuel throttle per cylinder, really? Okay. So it has multi-point throttle per cylinder. I'll give it a performance intake. <laughs> It has, to have, it has to have some aspect of fanciness to it. And then fuel, I guess premium unleaded. What's its red line? But when designing the engine, keep on effing in mind. I guess I guess he meant to say nothing. Let me actually see. Steel, steel, hypotectic. Okay. Sorry, I was looking too far up in the chat for your previous info, so... Alright, I'm just gonna build the engine now as I see fit. So... Maybe 8,000, is that too much? 7,5. Oh, by the way, um, on that starting up and revving your car thread on the forum, I actually revved my mum's Peugeot today for that thread, <laughs> so 
expect that later today. At the moment it's on my iPod so I need to actually put it onto my laptop and upload it. But it's a raging beast. Not really, it's pretty terrible. It's just a hatchback, all stock, nothing, nothing on it to make it sound any better than it should do. Alright, let's see if this works. Seems okay. Decent. I don't know how much power it should be making. Let me check in the chat. Ah, all aluminium, okay. <laughs> uh, where is it? I doubt it will affect, well, it won't affect power, but it will affect weight and maybe smoothness, I think. Oh, it actually made the power and torque worse and the economy, but it improved the emissions and it was less weight. <laughs> so it should have 410 or 440, uh, 441 newton meters. Okay, too much power and too little torque. I have no idea how I'm supposed to improve it though. basically letting Jack go tell me what to pick and then I can just put it together so basically Jack goes doing this engine standard intake hmm didn't change very much but okay Wow, that's definitely changed it. I think maybe tiny bit, wait, tiny bit more cam to get about 280 horsepower. Two hundred and seventy-six. Now that's the JDM limit that we had earlier. There we go. That should about do it. Okay, 283 and it has 344 torques. Let me see what they say for 441 torques it should have. I really don't think there's any chance of me being able to get that much. <laughs> but hey, I think even though the fuel octane is still very, uh, very low, well, unless I, unless I increase compression, then reduce cam profile. I don't know. Barely makes any emissions though. I don't know. Right, I'm tired of waiting for the chat. I'm just gonna. Save it. So what's it supposed to be called? Is it 3UZ or UZ if you're American?
we use it. You don't want to know what POS stands for, but I'm pretty sure you could take a very good guess. Although actually in my opinion it's a pretty decent engine, but I'm just going to say POS because the car is pretty diabolical. <laughs> Look at it, it's so, it's so sad. Okay, so does it have sequential? I don't imagine it would. At least I would hope it would have 6 speed gearbox. Hmm, where's 60 miles an hour? It's there, so I guess a tiny bit less spacing, just to get the best acceleration and everything out of it. Alright, next. I can't be bothered asking people to find info on the tyres and brakes and anything, so I'm just gonna... I'm just going to do it for myself. Wow, it's really laggy. have slightly bigger brakes on the rear because I don't know that's what I normally do. Uh, fully clad. It has four seats, doesn't it? Not two seats. Um, luxury interior. I think it did have quite a luxurious interior. Insulation I'll just keep as normal. I'm pretty sure it didn't have launch control. And then sport... Nah, normal suspension because it was kind of like a comfort ride as well. Well, allegedly. Now we give it a test. Give it a test. Let me click it. Hmm, tameness is good. Although it's less safe than my Nissan Sil well, my JDM car before. <laughs> Yes. Weight distribution and everything. Okay, yeah, I'm quite stupid. Make them smaller. <laughs> yeah, I just completely forgot that, you know, the force of the car accelerating will push it to the front and then you're trying to stop that force. So yeah, I get it. Physics and everything. Big increase in tameness and sportiness, so that's good. In fact, based on these five main stats, I'd say this is actually a really good all-round car, to be honest. Considering it only costs 12,000 to produce. Yeah, as I said, I'm not really too knowledgeable about the technical aspects of cars and everything as of yet so I will get things wrong now and then anyway let's take this over to the test track
Hurry up and start. Oh, it started, okay. And now we can stop it because the sound will be diabolical. I always say diabolical, I don't know why. Anyway, track stats. 128.7. Hmm. I wouldn't say that's amazing. I would say somewhere about 125 would be good, but then this, this actually should be a few seconds slower, so that would be around about 131, maybe 132. That's not too good. I mean, for a car that can do 184 miles an hour and has a 4.3 litre V8. I don't know, maybe I'm just bad at making cars, I don't know. Let me check what the chat thinks. Okay, a lot of technical talk going on in the chat, and I apparently I'm very wrong. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. But I get I get what you mean, but I just can't really put it into words very well. Anyway. I think this is actually going to be the uh, last car build, so I don't know whether I want to do any, uh, I don't know, any tweaks. That that back is extremely ugly. I, I really don't like those uh, tail lights, but hey, they're the most fitting for the car, so yeah. Anyway, Jack Go, is this replica up to scratch, do you think? Maybe give it a rating out of 10? <laughs> anyway. I keep looking at the chat and just not doing anything, so I think I'm going to end this stream here. I've been streaming for about two hours now. I think that's a length. I hope you'll I hope you guys all enjoyed yourselves. If you are new, like the guy with the chemistry name, what's he called? You there you are. Pyrophosphate. I like that name. Yeah, it could be a bit slower and a lot uglier. I agree. Uh anyway, yeah. So for those of you who are new feel free to follow us on Twitch, you'll get notified every time we go live, and I'm pretty sure you wouldn't want to miss this. Uh, go go over to facebook.com slash automation hub and like our page there. We will we'll post, we will announce our streams and what we'll be doing on the following streams on Facebook, so make sure you like us over there and you can stay up to date and all that good stuff. And other than that, just keep, keep on keeping on, I guess. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, follow us on Twitch, like us on Facebook, keep an eye on what we're doing, and also be excited for the website. We will be starting beta testing in hopefully the next couple of weeks, and then the website should be up and running in time for the game Steam release, which should be in a couple of months' time. So anyway, I think that's everything. I'm going to end this stream here, so hope you guys all had a good time, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>